Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this spectacular episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, a comic relief marathon. We are how many hours in now? We were eight hours eight. and 20 minutes into our 20 hour marathon in which we are trying to get through 35 facts by talking to 35 different people for 35 minutes each in celebration of 35 years of comic relief. And uh, we have raised so far 69,000 pounds. So thank you so much everyone who has contributed to it. If you could give more, we really wanna pump it up. The charity sectors are really suffering as a result of the pandemic. They're finding it a much harder landscape to try and raise money. And so we're trying to do our best. We told them that our fish fans would come to the table and bring the money. And so far you've done amazing, but we want more. So please do help us. And you know, if you've got any ideas for uh, what Mark Watson was just saying a bit ago about what we should auction, put it in the YouTube clips and we will, you know, we'll pick some out and but most likely ignore them. If it involves you know, anything other than just maybe doing a funny sort of face, I will, uh, I'll, 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 um, to the other guys. So let's get on with it. We are now going to move on to our, I think, God, what are we, 15 facts in now? It is our 15th fact of the show. And please welcome all the way over in New York. It is the brilliant comedian, Anabab Powell. Hey. Hey. Hi, Anabab. Welcome. Hey, buddy. Hi, Hi. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, I have to say, I've always been a big fan, but mainly because of just how many facts you guys know. <laughs> I, I, I love, uh, you know, just lying about history and just making up nonsense about history in my stand up and my writing. So I'm always terrified and fascinated when I come across you guys, I listen to you guys, because you actually know the real thing that I spend a lot of time messing up. Wait, yeah, uh, you don't want us heckling in your shows. That would completely ruin them. Yeah. Uh, about, we don't know anything. We just Google it. That's all. We just learnt it this week. We'll forget it all by next week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, well, let's uh, let's do this. Let's get into fact number fifteen. And what have you got for us, Anabab? Yeah. So, um, I have to tell you this. I was uh, born in the city of Calcutta, which got renamed Kolkata, and I think my city was named because an Englishman in sixteen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, it's oh, like wow. we have one of your shows. Yeah. <laughs> I, the history so far. Yeah. I, I tried to Google it. They're not even sure. They want to say 1685, <laughs> but even Google's not sure. Basically, an Englishman misunderstood the conversation. And that's how Calcutta got its name. Um, I can elaborate a little bit if you'd like. Yeah, I, yeah. conversation. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I wonder, I wonder yeah. how many mistakes have been made globally because an Englishman mis misunderstood a conversation. It feels like there's probably a rich thread of history. But yeah, how yeah. did this guy do it? You know, I've been in quarantine in New York and I got a little obsessed with this, uh, you know, I, not to the extent to be brilliant like you guys and your fans, but I just started Googling all Indian cities. And then I have to say, like, I think six of our cities were basically just a confused Englishman going, ah, I'm just going to call this Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, um, my dear. I, I with some um, some rooted history in it, and not just English, but Portuguese people visiting. I think Goa got its name like that. But in my hometown, there was an East India trader called Job Charnak, who I think I looked him up was uh, g generally regarded as a very morose, miserable man, but uh, quite an honest individual on behalf of the of the East India Company. And local farmers were quite used to, I think. East India Company traders coming up to shore and having conversations. And I think Job Chanak asked a farmer, what is this place? Because he was, he was touching a village. And the farmer, I think, thought, oh, this is one of those traders. He's going to want to buy my harvest. And so he said, Calcutta, which basically translates to, I cut the harvest yesterday. It's very fresh. Do you want it? And Job Chanak said, what? Well, this is just Calcutta. I'm just going to call it Calcutta. <laughs> and for 250 years, it became the capital of the British Empire. It went on to now be a major metropolis at, a, at the capital of Bengal with that name. Um, and so he's, only... just, he's just trying to flog some, some of his harvest, basically, to this English bloke. That's what Calcutta is. It's someone trying to sell you some corn. Exactly. Because it wasn't even, I looked it up, it wasn't a capital city when the East India Company started out. It was a little fishing village. And the capital was far more inland because the Mughal Empire was very strong in India. And they had a capital called Murshidabad, which was far more inland. 
And this was a little fishing village, but I think Job Chana took the word back and said, you know, I found this great little town. <laughs> it's called Calcutta. <laughs> and I think that started it because before that, there was nothing. It was just a fishing village. And I think maybe he bought the harvest. Maybe that's how the whole thing started. Um, yeah. He obviously looked enthusiastic when he heard the name of Calcutta and the farmer thought, I guess he wants it. And then yeah. started a <laughs> flourishing relationship. Yeah. So Somewhere out there, there's a very wealthy farmer who has no idea it's called Calcutta. <laughs> is, the, is this what prompted the name change? Or is, is the name, what, what brought about the name change from Calcutta to... Is it Kolkata? Kolka Kolka yeah, yeah. So, Andrew, that's very interesting. So we started at some point realizing sensibly, oh, no, no, British have gone. It's been about 60, 70 <laughs> years. We should, we should change the names. But I have a bunch of friends who work in city infrastructure, and they tell me the reason they didn't for many, many years is it's a nightmare changing street signs mm. and postcodes. Uh, you know, and yeah. it's, it's everywhere. It says Bombay, Bombay, Bombay. Just a massive infrastructural hassle. Yeah. To yeah go in every pilot having to say, oh, now we're landing in Bombay, Mumbai, Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so they tried to keep it going as long as possible. Um, and of course, at some point, there was public outcry saying, oh, we need a more local name, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so yeah. all these cities sensibly have now changed to more local things. But if you really look into it, and, and I'm, you guys would know this better than me, I'm not very qualified, but they've changed it to like a very slight difference to the English original yeah. spelling. Yeah. And they gave it some sort of concocted historical, spiritual, religious explanation. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. So we found a word that sounded like Bombay. Uh, I'd call it Mumbai, mm. you know, which there is a, a Hindu goddess called Mumbra. So you could stretch it and, and mm -hmm. say Mumbra, Mumbai, Bombay. But Got basically it. it's because no one could be bothered with a, with a thing that was very different, except the south of India who said hell with it and called Madras Chennai. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which confused many people eating Indian food from then on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone having a dosa or whatever would be very confused. <laughs> um, Anubhav, can, what was the name of the um, illiterate Englishman who who couldn't get the name right? What's he called? Job Charnock. Job Charnock. Yes. Yeah. So I was just checking. So in 2003, um, the Kolkata High Court ruled that he did not officially found Kolkata. Uh, and they said, well, we found evidence that there was um, people living there before. And so we're not saying that he definitely founded the city. But what that means is that Kolkata now has no birthday. <laughs> yeah. So we used to have a date when the city was founded, but now yeah. we don't have a date anymore. So you can't say it's X years old. It's yeah, sad. exactly. That's tragic because it means so much to cities to celebrate their birthday. <laughs> and, you know, we all... Make a big cake each year, don't we? I'm sure yeah. you guys did in Calcutta. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, and I feel really bad for Job Charnock because I looked him up and it seemed like this was like his only thing. <laughs> <laughs> you had one job, Charnock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he seemed like he was a pretty good broker for the East India Company and wasn't corrupt and he wasn't a smuggler, which yeah. back then I think was a good thing. Um, and... But other than that, he's only associated with naming the city. So I think I, I looked up Mumbai and that had a longer, more complicated thing because it, the Portuguese had it for a long time and they called it different things. And uh, the British called it Bombay because I think they got good bay from the Portuguese, uh, mm. who I think had the word Bambahia, which meant good. I, but mm. then, you know, we changed it and then other people changed it in between. Then they exchanged hands in a dowry of some sort. Like you guys would know. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. It's, yeah. uh, no one can make up their minds. Okay. Was, <laughs> it, well, it was it was a time of extreme um, rivalry between Portugal and Britain, wasn't it? And so, whatever they named something, I'm afraid we were going to have to name it something different. But yeah. now, there's there's another controversy in Calcutta because the independent newspaper, at least in 2016, briefly said that they were going to start spelling it C A L C U W T A. Um, so mm, really? this is because they had an editor, Amal Rajan, who is, um, so he's born in India, but was living in Britain at the time, editing The Independent. And he was saying that Mumbai has, um, so this is, this is um, Bombay and Mumbai. So he was saying Mumbai actually has Hindu nationalist connotations because that was chosen by sort of right wing 
BJP party mm-hmm. and actually we should go back mm-hmm. to that spelling and go back to like Calcutta and all of that so now oh. there's this other movement saying let's go back to this oh. colonially imposed because yeah. I guess maybe they've got the signpost left in the drawer they want to put it all back up yeah exactly because uh, you know like uh, the main train station in Mumbai, Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, was called Victoria Station uh, for a very long time. Lots of things were called Victoria Station really? in yeah. India. Yeah, and, that makes sense. And the thing is, imagine the signboard, right? Victoria comes down and the whole word, Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, the whole thing has to go up. <laughs> Great for the signage company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're raking it in with these big names, right? But yeah, then you have yeah. to find the right script and all of that. And uh, yeah, so there is this big sort of thing. I, I've always also been fascinated fascinated by spellings of Indian cities that, you know, that happened in the 250 years before when India had various, like uh, the city of Kanpur, K-A-N-P-U-R is how we spell it now, mm-hmm. uh, was a British garrison and they spelled it Kanpur, C-A-W-N-P-O-R-E. Mm-hmm. So it sounded like something out of a Noel Coward song. Or something. <laughs> 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 it was, um, and I sort of, uh, I sort of kind of loved I started looking up different cities and each has such, such a crazy history. I tried to look up Barcelona, which I think was like various kings and, and uh, they were fighting over different things and renamed things. For some reason, I looked up Hull. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Hull? Well, it's it's oh. the two most beautiful cities in Europe, I think. Mm. Yeah. Most Gaudi was, Gaudi was going to put a massive cathedral in the middle of Hull, wasn't he? And then he just decided last minute... <laughs> he just changed his mind. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't happy with the vegetarian restaurant, so he, just, <laughs> he changed his mind. So I, I don't know why. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember so, when I, I get to come to England to do shows, and one of the things I love sort of looking up is just whatever town I'm in, just a little bit of the history, because there's so much of it in your country. Mm. You know, just like everything goes mm. back to someone who beheaded someone, or you know, it just goes yeah, to yeah. some <laughs> origin name. And... And I, the last time I was there, I went to Hull and I just loved how short the word was. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone told me it comes from Kingston, which is a river. And yeah. then yes. there's a hill nearby. Um, Kingston upon Hull. Kingston upon Hull. Uh, Not to be confused Hull. with Kingston upon Thames, which is the yeah. two yeah. kings. Two, I mean, Kingston, town of the king. Yeah. <laughs> It's but Hull is just a dead short, you know. <laughs> and then it also seems like they couldn't quite be bothered to say hill anymore. So it's a hole. <laughs> it's just going to be HL in the end. Oh. Uh, um, so you guys, um, if I say where's um, Prague, yep. or which country Czech. is it in? Czechia, yeah. James yeah. says the correct thing because uh, James is up to speed. With but a lot of people would say the Czech Republic, you know, mm, which yeah. is no longer the official name. So the Czech Republic announced in, in 2016, we've got a new short name for the country. It's going to be Czechia. And people are just not taking to it. They don't no. like it. Even in Czechia, um, it, you know, the country's authorities still call it the Czech Republic. The president still refers to it as the Czech Republic. And if you ask people in the streets, as the Guardian newspaper did, they sent a correspondent to ask people, said, what country is this? And obviously they looked at them like they were crazy, but then they said, well, we're in the Czech Republic. <laughs> and it, it's a it kind of imposed change and it really hasn't yeah. quite caught it's, on. There is just um, one person who says it. That yes. guy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll keep doing it. The guy who says, says Penino. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's um, like, I wonder how much Kazakhstan has caught on. You know, there was a yeah, thing, they changed yeah. it, didn't they? Sorry. Kazakhstan, you know, Kazakhstan, uh, they wanted to make the name more in tune with the their current alphabet. I think it's to do with the change from the Cyrillic to the Roman alphabet. Right. Um, but basically, the, they decided that the proper spelling should now start with a Q. Um, Kazakhstan. In order to, Kazakhstan. And I haven't really heard that come into common parlance, <laughs> yeah. except in the book that we wrote a couple of years ago, announcing it as the official name. So I'm yes. surprised that didn't have more of an impact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, sometimes I feel like political, um, you know, awareness and history, sometimes all of that gets forgotten for just simplicity. Um, mm. I, I live on uh, a street called Turner Road in Mumbai. Um, and simple to say, Turner Road. Nobody remembers who Turner was. I think he'd done some work with drainage in Mumbai. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> and then it got changed to Khansham Das Talat Rao Marg, who I think was a <laughs> very important local wicketkeeper. I think he was a, oh. a, 
some sort of a well-known like regional wicket keeper. But even if you speak to like, you know, the rights groups and activists and stuff, and they're like, where do you live? I live on Turner Road. It's just simpler to say. Um, <laughs> and even though they're on Twitter finding, you know, fighting for changing everything and road names and stuff. Yeah. They're like, oh, where do you live? I live on Turner Road. It's just simpler to say sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. I thought we sorry. I thought we announced a policy of not discussing cricket in this section of the podcast, given current circumstances. But the message doesn't seem to have got through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know some of it has to do with the fact that I'm in America, and this is I, I've, I haven't come to this country very often. I've come once or twice, and I don't understand. I mean, they're speaking in English, but I don't understand the words that are coming out from sporting <laughs> events. So I'm really missing cricket. I don't even care if we're winning or losing. Uh, I'm just missing. Well, you're winning, mate. So well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to the baseball lineup. It's it's pretty much the same. It's just you know, it's just cricket it's just, with hot dogs. Just simplified. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just shocked by how little they play before they stop. You know, like I, I tried to watch a game and it's eleven or twelve. Yeah, I'm used to watching a match for six or seven days. <laughs> Adam, I've still sat there five days later going, yeah. well, they'll come back eventually. <laughs> this game was four Friday minutes. <laughs> and out of those four minutes, the, the coach spoke for three and a half and there were medicine ads for a minute. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand the sport. I mean, you know, I've watched cricket games where people have died. Their grandchildren have been batting. Um, so it's, it's very, so I'm missing it. I apologize, Adam. I won't bring it up. No, halfway, through, it. halfway through the innings, one of the players has a street named after him. That's <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I managed to find while I was looking for um, stuff about Calcutta um, and I stumbled upon a great book. I wonder if you've heard of this, Anabab. It's a, um, I, there's a Harry Potter book which is based in Calcutta uh, called Harry Potter in Calcutta. Do you know about that? <laughs> Oh, oh but I, but I, 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 you I never will. <laughs> Whenever Dan announces a fake fact, then he, we cut him off. It's very strict. There I don't. Go. I don't know if this was some Bengali sorcerer that got you, Dan. I'm not sure. <laughs> I actually think it was J.K. Rowling's attorneys quickly yeah. um, <laughs> shut it off because this this was an illegal book that was released in India, but it was put in shops and it was written by this guy who was bored with how long it was taking for the books to come out the times that she was taking, that he thought, I'll just write an interstitial book. So it's called Harry Potter and Calcutta, the old spelling. And the idea is that immediately after the Philosopher's Stone, Harry gets on his Nimbus 2000 broom and zooms to Calcutta <laughs> at the invitation of a young boy called Junto. And um, they get into all kinds of scrapes and meet all kinds of people, and it's a whole story. And this was published and put in shops, and then it was it was taken down because the estate found out about it. But the interview wasn't this guy even being like, oh yeah, you got me. He was just like, oh, I'm really gutted. I had like seven other books that I was gonna write in my <laughs> Harry Potter series. I had a whole line. And uh, yeah, but so somewhere out there in the sort of marketplaces, there'll be old copies of Harry Potter in Kolkata, and I really want one. So it this almost is the thing. rhymes, doesn't it? It almost rhymes, and it's kind of satisfying, but not that it See, doesn't rhyme. This is why this is my favorite podcast. I get all my Diwali present ideas from here. <laughs> <laughs> I now know what. To, so you know, we've we've done a, a variety of this. It's brilliant, Dad. Um, so I mean, the part of India, Calcutta has sort of this old tradition of two things, um, which haven't really caught on in the rest of India. One is detective stories. Uh -huh. Very big. And it's a big Calcutta thing. It's, you know, it hasn't caught on in the rest of India. Ghost stories and like Harry potter -y sort of, I don't know mm. how you define the fantasy. genre, fantasy. Yeah. Thank you. James, that kind of thing. Sorry. And we, and we have a detective. No, I actually don't read very much fantasy. I know I know it's a, probably a sacrilege to say that. Um, but... Uh, We've just lost half of our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any history in it, you know, I think, you know, if there's... Um, but we have a variation of Sherlock Holmes called Feluda. He's a Bengali detective. He So uh, the author changed some of the idiosyncrasies. So instead of, so he's got an address similar to 221 Baker Street, uh, B Baker Street, fictitious. Um, he smokes, he does yoga. Uh, he does. He smokes a pipe. He's got a sidekick called Topshe, which is a Bengali fish. Um, so okay. what, his sidekick's an actual fish, or no? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's uh, named after a fish. Okay. Like, uh, like it's like naming a sidekick Haddock or whatever. So, yeah. uh, uh, but a number, of, <laughs> a number of those things are stolen. Um, and he thrived as a detective. And he, I'd speak to my, yeah, we grew up reading this. And you speak to friends. We'd also read Sherlock Holmes. And you speak to friends, be like, don't you see that he may have? And we'd be like, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely original. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to change shiny. I think in China, they changed it to, um, they, they made Harry Potter female and called her Tanya Grotter. And <laughs> then you're fine. Although I don't know, that doesn't sound like a Chinese uh, <laughs> Name anyway, I, does it? I love the idea of Holmes taking Watson down to the fish pond and <laughs> releasing him in there to find a clue. You know, yeah. <laughs> you have, there is a Bengali detective story coming up, Andy. That's going to be <laughs> the sidekick is an actual fish. I think they I'll even tried a Bollywood film with Harry Potter, changing the name of Harry Potter. Oh, really? Um, I think so. I think it was a thing for a while. And I remember the producer vehemently claiming it has nothing to do with Harry Potter. Wow. Um, and I think the name was very similar. I think... <laughs> God, um, I, I, I worry that J.K. Rowling's here just taking notes, watching this. Yeah. Oh, well, sued, sued, sued. <laughs> In Russia, he's just called Gary Potter. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. Is he really? Wow. Yeah, it's mostly because they can't really pronounce the H the same way that we do. They don't really oh, have the right. same letter, but yeah. Because they called Hitler Gitler as well and stuff like that. Gitler. If he'd been called Gitler, he would have not done nearly as well. Right. <laughs> Did you know we used to be able to get a bus to Kolkata from London. Yeah, I read it's about amazing, that. It's amazing, right? Yeah, wow. So how many days was that? Was that like a... Um, yeah, it was. It would take you 50 days. <laughs> if you miss one, you're going to be wasting a while for the next one. It does. It um, eats into your holiday allowance, doesn't it? it when does. you've only got 20. <laughs> Uh, the cost of the trip was £85, and it went through Belgium, Yugoslavia in those days, uh, West Pakistan in those days, and then all the way into India. Uh, and yeah, it kept going until in the end it had to be stopped because of the war in, wars in the Middle East. And right. Stuff. Imagine if it's one of those buses where it's definitely on your route home, but if you miss your stop, <laughs> the next stop is like yeah. 15 hours away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, come on, please, at the next red light, let me off, mate. Sorry about it. We're going to Turkey. <laughs> you know, with COVID, we may have to actually gig like that, get on a bus in Calcutta and yeah. just keep, keep going. So, How did they cross the the Hindu Kushma? I, I guess the same way the, the sort of Mughal Kyber invaders Pass. would have done. There must be Kyber, Kyber Pass. Kyber Kyber Pass. They're, they're yeah. about to turn the Kyber Pass into a multi-lane expressway at the moment, I think they're doing that. Okay. What? I think so, oh, yeah. I read, I, to be honest, I only read that in passing. I might be wrong about that. This yeah. might be a Boris Johnson scheme. He's just announced. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to oh, connect yeah, Ireland yeah, yeah, yeah. to Mumbai. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I really feel bad for like invaders in the 15th and 16th century. Like imagine Genghis Khan being told, oh, you know, that thing that took you 50 years, there's going to be a highway now. Yeah. 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 A lot of effort for nothing. Yeah. Um, just, hey, on um, sort of colonizers, misnaming things. Yeah. Um, just one other one that I've always liked. This is the Portuguese again. Uh, English and the Portuguese, nailing every time. Rio de Janeiro. Um, Rio, Portuguese word for river. Mm. And navigators got there, 1502. January the 1st, 1502. Um, lovely New Year's Day present. And they mistook the entrance of the bay for the mouth of a river and named it before they'd even checked. So, <laughs> the, and Rio, ever since the 500 years, has been called, you know, river mouth, um, January there's no river. river. There's no river there. No, it's just the mouth of a bay. Oh, um, no. So they, but at, like you haven't even landed by the time you've gone. Let's just call it January River, shall we? And wow. it sticks. Yeah, oh, very funny. You, know, maybe you, you guys can help me. I took my parents. I went with my parents to Darjeeling. Oh yeah, uh, for the first time. You know, tea estates, lots of history. Um, the movie, and, that great movie. The, by exactly. Wes Anderson. Yes, Darjeeling Limited. He made it a train, right? He made it a, uh, a train ride. Yeah. Uh, that that uh, book, Harry Potter in Darjeeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he'll never get to write it. So sad. So sad. <laughs> And I asked the locals where did it come from, and they said uh, Darjeeling means Lord of the Thunderbolt or uh, cool. Land of the Thunderbolt. And I was like, oh, do you guys get a lot of thunderstorms? And they said, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God just smites us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
So wow, nobody could tell cool. me. Our tour guide was like, you know, <laughs> no idea. So that's that's really there was a place I, I grew up in Hong Kong, Anabab, and there was um, a thing that I read in this great magazine called Forty and Times, where they said that when the uh, just stop laughing, everyone. It is a good magazine. It's a very good magazine. It's a great magazine. It's a great magazine. <laughs> if you want to get your up to the minute Yeti news and your <laughs> chubacabras and moon conspiracy theories, um, but it's a um, it had this thing about when Hong Kong, when all the um, the Brits were coming over and they were trying to remap it and rename it and they were asking what locations were called, um, they ended up giving them the Chinese names of places that they would then later adopt but keep the Chinese names. So in Hong Kong, they just were really cheeky with all of the Brits coming in. So there were still places, according to this magazine, that are called Vaginal Discharge Bay. Oh, gosh. Yep. Cow Shit Lake. <laughs> Penis Head Rock. Oral Sex Corner. <laughs> and foreign devil sex organ. Great. These are all oh. these are all spots. Oh, yeah. Interestingly, yeah. vaginal discharge bay actually is a river. Mm. So it's misnamed that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the locals are most embarrassed about. There, isn't it? <laughs> it must be very hard for real estate brokers in Hong Kong to <laughs> 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 keep going on tours and say, "Oh, the, hey, yeah. apparently we cut out for a second and." Oh. Um, Ethan and Alex quickly ran in to say that we cut out at Oral Sex Corner. So if I could repeat, Oral <laughs> Sex Corner and Foreign Devil Sex Organ, are the other two places named by. You wouldn't want to miss that. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> sorry for cutting you off. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, there are a few more places that get changed, especially this happens in Australia a little bit because um, they have come some quite weird names. Um, so, for instance, there's a road called Tits Wobble Road, which they're trying to change at the moment because they think it's inappropriate somehow. Is it, very, no is, it, is it just very badly tarmacked or something? Exactly right. It's really? very badly tarmacked. Wow. Uh, it's a really bumpy ride, and so they call it Tits Wobble Road. Uh, right. But they're going to try and maybe change that in a few um, years next year or so and there's another one called curly dick road mm. ah. uh, any ideas why they might call that uh it's very twisty that's oh, one theory but not the most likely okay. uh, um, basically i'll tell you what it was because yeah. it's pretty hard to guess there was a guy called dick who lived there and he was bald and so as a funny joke they called him curly dick Okay. Uh, that's why he lived there. But they think it's offensive and they're going to change the name. Offensive right. to bald dick, long forgotten. I, I don't think... know if he's going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> His estate might. You know, uh, speaking of sort of unimaginative names, uh, in Calcutta there is a street called Circular Road. And parallel to it runs a road called Not Circular Road. Oh. <laughs> and, and I, don't, I don't know why we've never, you know, like you'll ask people, where are you going now? They'll just abbreviate it and say NC Road, meaning Not Circular Road. But at some point I was like, what is NC Road? They found out it's Not Circular Road. <laughs> circular Road, like how unimaginative. You have to <laughs> so good. Hey, um, listen, I, I can't believe it. And, and I'm saying this a lot, but we've shot through the time. It feels oh. like we've been talking five minutes, but we've done our 35 minutes minutes with you. So Anabab, we're going to have to say goodbye to you, but thank you so much for doing this. It's so great to talk to you. Um, it's it's yeah. my pleasure. And I'm hoping some of the 1.3 billion people that I live amongst are waking up and seeing this and will <laughs> tune in for a good cause. So. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And um, we will be back, everyone, in a couple of minutes uh, with our next guest, who is one half of the almighty Freakonomics phenomenon. It is Stephen J. Dubner. We'll see you then. Hello everybody, that was fun, wasn't it? Well now you have to pay. Please, please go to comicrelief.com slash fish and give us all of your money so that it can be spent on fabulous causes around the world. There are many more videos where these came from, so bring all of your money and give it to us. Link is below, click on the link.